Sarajevo is now a bustling cultural capital. Only the shrapnel and bullet holes in some of the buildings give a clue to its recent history. The city was held under siege for 43 months during the early and mid-1990s. Its people lived in terror as shells and sniper fire rained down from the surrounding hills. An estimated 12,000 people died. The only escape from the city was this tunnel dug beneath the airport, which brought supplies in and people out. The battle-scarred house where the tunnel emerged is now a museum. Idish Kolar, a former soldier who owns the house, says the people of Sarajevo want to move on. When Bosnian people come to see the tunnel, I can see they are trying to move on. They are trying to keep the war in history and museums. The problem is the politicians are not letting us forget. The US brokered Dayton peace accords were signed 15 years ago, bringing together the Serbian, Bosnian and Croat leaders. Bosnian politicians agree that the accords were successful in bringing peace and stability to the Balkans. But otherwise, most analysts say they appear divided. Former Bosnian President Harris Selajic was part of the delegation at Dayton in the US Midwestern state of Ohio. He says that by giving the Bosnian Serbs their own autonomous region, known as Republika Srpska, as part of the agreement, the ethnic cleansing of Bosnia is being perpetuated. What we now see is the attempt to legalize what happened here, to put the international stamp on it like it was okay. Milosevic's project is being completed as we speak now. Former Bosnian Croat politician Krezimir Zubak was also at Dayton. He agrees that ethnic divisions need to be addressed. The goals that the different sides had in 1992, after they were not achieved by force, they're now trying to achieve them by political means. Slavko Jovicic is a Bosnian Serb politician in parliament. He says there is no way his people will give up the Republika Srpska for a centralized state. One thing can never happen in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and that's the dominance of one group over others. We say that without a Republika Srpska, there will be no Bosnia-Herzegovina. Such divisions are mirrored in Bosnia's education system, as different ethnic groups are taught different curricula in separate classes. But in the city of Mostar, scene of some of the fiercest fighting during the war, the United World College teaches Bosnian Muslims, Serbs and Croats together. The students are optimistic about their country's future. And I think that the situation maybe will change in this generation. We are the new generation that should definitely lead into something more bright. It's a process and it's going to take a while. Mostar is famous for its Ottoman bridge, which stood for more than 400 years until it was shelled during the war. The destruction of the ancient bridge in Mostar was symbolic of the wanton destruction of the war. Its restoration in 2004 shows that many of the physical scars of the war are being healed, but many political and mental scars still remain. Most politicians here agree that Bosnia's future should lie within the European Union. That future, analysts say, depends on the ability of the people here to overcome the conflicts of the past. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, Sarajevo.